Uh, this is a lightning talk about heap to stack conversion. And uh, heap to stack conversion is something that uh, I think is a really interesting story. And it's a really interesting story because A, it involves how the compiler magically fixes people's bad code. Uh, two, uh, it involves undefined behavior. And everyone who likes C and C++ and other programming languages love undefined behavior. Uh, but it's a nice story about how the compiler can use the lack of undefined behavior to optimize your code. And so this is uh, what I will try and talk to you about for the next you know, four minutes and uh, 10 seconds. So, uh, so here we go. So what is heap, heap to stack conversion? So heap, heap to stack conversion is a transformation where the compiler can uh, take calls to uh, malloc or new, and there are corresponding calls to uh, delete or free, and can uh, convert them uh, in certain situations into stack allocations. So uh, generically, this uh, can happen when the size of the allocation is constant and relatively small. Obviously, you can do it in other cases too, but for now, we'll say constant and relatively small. Uh, and, uh, and there are a number of reasons uh, why you might want to do that. Uh, so, and I've uh, highlighted here three. So uh, one reason you may want to do that is because your memory allocator may not be super, super fast. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, we can have a long debate about how fast your memory allocator is, whether you should have a faster memory allocator, uh, whether your memory allocator should have lower overheads than it does, than it does. I mean, all that's true. Uh, but needless to say, many people have memory, memory allocators that aren't very uh, fast. The second thing is, even if you have a fast memory allocator, uh, fast memory allocators tend to have overheads, especially for small allocations, and it's, uh, it would be a good idea to, to reduce those kinds of things. Um, and in addition, it turns out that when you take uh, memory allocations and move them from the heap onto your stack, you often, not always, but often get memory locality benefits from doing that uh, because your stack data is, is local, your, the top of your stack tends to be in cache, et cetera. And so, uh, there are sort of side benefits to doing this, and in addition, there are optimization benefits. So, uh, you know, the, the memory allocation functions are special, sort of, to the compiler. I mean, the compiler does understand what malloc does to some extent, what new does to some extent. Uh, but, you know, to most of the compiler, these things just like, look like opaque external function calls, and they block optimizations and do other things that aren't so nice. So. Uh, what uh, converting these things into stack allocations does is it frees up the optimizer to uh, perform uh, additional optimizations. Okay, so how do, how do we do this? Uh, so conceptually speaking, you want to find calls to, uh, to malloc, new, and uh, corresponding calls to uh, free and delete. And the key thing you want to you wanna know is that from a particular call to, say, malloc, uh, you can see a call to free on all of the paths, uh, all the paths through the control flow graph that emanate from that point. So you have the kind of collection of calls to, to free and delete, and those, that collection of calls, not an individual call, needs to sort of post-dominate uh, the, the call to, to malloc in, in some sense. Um, and I, I said that there was a, a nice sort of connection here to, to undefined behavior, and so I, I want to mention this quickly. Um, so, so many people think about heap to stack conversion as requiring a capturing analysis. And it does to some extent, but the capturing analysis isn't in some sense the important point. Because often in the cases where this matters, the data, the pointer actually is captured. Um, but the point is that since you know it's not valid to free the data twice, uh, as long as you can see the call to free on all of the paths, even if there are external function calls in the way and things that you can't analyze, you know that it's safe to do the conversion. And you're relying on the fact that freeing the data twice would be undefined behavior. Thus, you assume that doesn't happen. And thus, as long as you see some call to free, then you know that you can convert the pair. Now, the tricky part here is that uh, you do need to make sure that, the, that you, all those frees that you see are actually reachable. And there's another tie into undefined behavior there as well, because in C and C++, in most cases, you get to assume things like loops terminate, uh, unless they have IO or atomics and things like that, which you can check for. And so uh, we have to leverage these different undefined behavior properties, I should say the lack of undefined behavior, that allows us to prove various things about the optimization we want to do, and is a good tie-in here to enabling this optimization. Thank you. <laughs>